Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and in case you had forgotten, about a month ago I was in Hawaii, and one of the things I had made a point of going to see was Kilauea, the volcano. I thought I would impress everyone with awesome videos like this of lava kind of bubbling away in the crater. This was the active vent inside the Halema Uma'u crater, which itself was inside the much larger Kilauea caldera. And you can go up to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory and kind of point a camera. It's about a mile away and I was able to get these views. Of course, I now wish I'd edited and uploaded this footage sooner because uh, in the weeks since I've left, things have got a little more crazy. So yeah, this video basically taken yesterday at 9.30 in the morning shows you know, lava just rolling down the street of one of the subdivisions of Lilani. This video and many others are from the US Geological Survey, who are of course monitoring the volcanoes. And, you know, what it shows us basically is that, yes, people actually live on this active volcano. The island of Hawaii is actually made of five volcanoes. In the north you have Kohala and Mauna Kea, those are old and dormant. In the west, above Kona, you have Hulalai, which last erupted 200 years ago. You have Mauna Loa, which is the world's biggest volcano, last active in 1984. And you have Kilauea, the world's most active volcano. And this is the source of the current eruption. But you know, 10 years ago, it was a whole lot quieter. I actually went and dug out some photos from my honeymoon back in 2003. I didn't have time to go looking for lava, but, you know, sure, I was able to see some uh, steam vents and some sulfur vents, and I was able to drive all around the crater. But in 2008, there was an explosion, and a vent opened up once again in the crater. And activity in this vent caused it to collapse and get larger and larger, and now it's home to a lava lake. Now, the lava lake rises and falls depending upon activity. And the day before we arrived, there was a rock fall into this lava pool, which caused this big explosion. What happens is when rocks fall into the lava, the lava actually contains a lot of gas. So these disruptions kind of cause the gas to get released much faster. So you get this blast of gas and other material that rises up. And it's pretty noxious stuff. And about two weeks ago, the level in the lava lake got high enough that it started spilling out onto the crater floor. Now, this is a smaller crater, Halema Uma'o, which is inside the much larger Kilauea caldera. Volcanoes are usually a lot more complicated than a simple cone with a single vent at top. In fact, Kilauea has two different vents that are currently active. There's Halema Uma'o, which we're seeing right now. But heading down the east slope, there's an area called the East Rift Zone. And there, there is a crater called Pu'u O'o. And it also has an active lava pool in it. It's a lot smaller, but it is active. And its lake had also been rising slowly over the, the last month or so. And presumably some of this pressure that was pushing up that lava was also pushing lava further down the mountain. And yeah, this is some video from a downtown Lilani Estate. Cracks were forming in the road as pressure underneath started to push stuff up. So you would get, uh, you know, steam coming up here and sulfur dioxide coming out. Which is actually one of the main hazards to life on the volcano. It's not as you might expect the lava because the lava actually tends to move relatively slowly and people can get out of the way. People are much more likely to get caught in a situation where they are overpowered by the gas. Of course, you know, buildings and stuff, they do tend to get destroyed because you can't really argue with the lava flow, although people have tried at various times. There have in fact been cases where people took buildings off their foundations and just basically moved them out of the way, such as the church in Kalpana. This is of course distinct from something like Mount St. Helens, which in 1980 exploded sideways at hundreds of miles an hour. So anyway, this map kind of shows the line of fissures that have formed, with fissure number eight actually generating the most lava. It's flown for about half a mile and, yeah, destroyed about 35 houses, unfortunately. Meanwhile, the lava lake at the top of the mountain has been draining back down into it. This is the thermal camera. They place it looking straight down into it. And this goes down something like 700 feet. That is a lot of lava. But I mean, don't presume that that lava going down there is coming out because these places are miles and miles apart. But certainly the pressure being released elsewhere may result in this dropping down. 
And scientists can say this because Kilauea is one of the most studied volcanoes in the world. There is an observatory, a volcano observatory. It's not looking at the stars, it's looking at the, uh, the rock underneath. As the magma moves around, it generates seismic waves. And using these, you can build a three-dimensional image of the structure underneath the volcano. You can see the plume of hot magma coming up through the mantle from deep inside the Earth. And there have been a lot of earthquakes. As the lava pressure increases, it moves through gaps, it finds new ways, it creates fractures and fissures. And when it escapes to the surface, all that pressure... It gets relieved and the earth is starting to sink back down. And as it does that, you're getting even more earthquakes and seismic activity. And I gotta say, I am not a geologist. I am learning all of this stuff from the good people at the US Geological Survey. I do know a little about space, and yes, there are plenty of satellites which are making their own observations. The craters are very obvious in any thermal images of the area. This image is from NASA's Terra satellite, which has been up for like 20 years. You can see the fresh lava flows, you can see the vegetation, and the, the green areas are the hot spots that have been observed. Same satellite, different instrument allows the observation of atmospheric content. So here you can actually see the plume of sulfur dioxide, which is blowing away from the eruption sites. And it's not all NASA spacecraft. This is from ESA's Sentinel-1. This is what's called an interferogram. It's basically they've taken uh, radar imagery and by accounting for the phase of the return, they can figure out very small changes in the height there. So each band represents 2.83 centimeters change. While that's cool, it's probably easier to look at these graphs which are derived from uh, GPS measurements from both sides of each crater. And you can see that in the last few months, it, uh, the distances started to ramp up and get very, very high. And in the last couple of days, they've suddenly dropped down as the uh, mountain has started to deflate. Obviously, I'm really fascinated by this. But at the same time, you know, you have to realize people are being displaced. People are losing their homes. So I'm now going to stop with the current eruption and rewind to my vacation because there's a few things that I observed that I thought it would be nice to talk about. Everywhere you go on the island, there are signs of former eruptions. You're basically driving along the road and it's nice and green and then suddenly it turns into a black moonscape. I'm not much of a geologist, but I kept wanting to get out and walk around and explore. You would find crazy cool shapes. So one of the really cool things about Hawaii is that unlike many other places, you can actually find bits of land, bits of terrain, which are younger than you. Uh, I, this uh, lava flow I'm standing on, 1974. I mean, it swept down the mountain, you know, from over there, I guess. And, uh, you know, you can see they had to cut the road, cut, you know, to put the road back in through this. It's also kind of cool here. There's a giant big crater down there where it's you know, obviously flowed into and then stopped because the trees on the far side they are on much much older ground the young ground on the other hand you know 40 years there's things coming back to life here i mean there's this tree this tree looks uh i don't know if that came in since this but maybe uh it was destroyed i don't know i can't i can't imagine that lava flows would be uh, particularly hospitable for existing stuff. But yeah, things coming back in through this. There's little holes in it, little cracks, layers. It's just amazing to kind of watch this. And you know, the thing about lava flows is they're dirty, they're ugly, they're black, they're scary, they look otherworldly. But the truth is they're just young baby earth. You know, when we are young kids, I mean, we're kind of like blobby little things that squeal and poop ourselves and cry lots. And this is kind of like young planet Earth. It may not be pretty right now, but eventually it will be honed by its experiences, by its weathering. And it will become, you know, no doubt, great farmland or whatever. I don't know what it'll turn into, but yeah, young Earth. Volcano National Park, when it's open, has a lot to see. And there's a fantastically preserved lava tube that they've thoughtfully gone in and added some lighting and everything so you can actually explore it. But with so many old lava fields on the island, it's actually quite easy to find uh, lava tubes in their natural state. Okay, so this is like the craziest thing. We've got a uh, sunset in one direction. 
and uh, yeah there is a rainbow overhead and underneath we have this epic lava tube this is by the, the highway just uh, north of the uh, Kona airport so lava tubes are basically what happens is when lava finds a channel it starts flowing through it and because the top is exposed to the air the top cools down and hardens so it ends up creating this tunnel and there's these tunnels all over these lava flows and you'll find parts of the lava flows have basically collapsed because the uh you know be, because there's a lava tube under there so yeah you know it's been an epic day we've got amazing light amazing sunlight we've got the sun setting it's like oh there's a ryan there walking around of course People have set up all these stones next to this area. Wow, I'm just going to try and explore. Can you stack from stones uh, as long as you don't break anything? Because stones are you know, really hard to break, right? Let's just uh, bring this down here. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the weather has been really wet today. They're about to fall over. <laughs> There is a, a very adventurous explorer going in down there underneath, waving to us all. Oh, Orion's gonna go down. You know, Orion, you have sandals on. In fact, Sky's got sandals on. Why does nobody have hiking shoes for this dangerous volcanic uh, structure here? Yeah, and it's starting to rain now. So, of course, being a respectable uh, and cautious adult, I cautioned my kids with sandals to stay out. Um, that didn't stop them. I mean, seriously, if you're going to be in Hawaii and you're going to be walking around on lava flows, you need proper shoes. Anyway, the footage from all this was terrible because it was too dark, but there's some nice snapshots where you can see the huge amount of rubble that you get on the floor of lava tubes. Now... I've heard scientists talking about lava tubes on the moon and Mars being a great place to set up human bases. Well, you know, there's they're not that easy because there's still plenty of rubble and everything getting in the way. This uh, section, it did go a long way back, at least about a quarter of a mile from the road before I decided that I wanted to return to the surface. And you could just climb out where the roof had collapsed. Yeah, they get just steam coming off this cliff here. What do you think of the steam, Orion? Okay. It's okay. You prefer the lava? Yeah. That's the lava is way over there. Hopefully we'll see some more later. And we have like little spots in there which are like generating steam. And there's another like old crater in there. And then it just continues all the way up there. This is basically um, water seeps into cracks and then comes back, comes up to the surface, gets heated. Because the sulfur dioxide in the air dissolves in the rainwater to create acids, you'll find that all the concrete fence posts have uh, you know, terrible corrosion on the top of them, since they have a pretty extreme version of acid rain. Another less obvious volcanic feature you might encounter are the black sand beaches. Even regular beaches can have black sand, but that tends to be something like magnetite or hematite. The black sand beaches on Hawaii are where you have uh, volcanic lava that has flowed into the ocean and it is just shattered. And that stuff has formed a very sharp black sand. But because it's only replenished by uh, volcanic action, the beaches don't tend to last for a long time. So they have very strict rules on not taking black sand away from the beach. So, you know, I consider myself lucky I saw this. Obviously, some people are feeling rather less lucky because the lava is coming to them. But even without the lava lake, you know, the Volcanoes National Park was pretty impressive place to go. There was so much to see, so many places to hang out. And it's a bargain if you want to, you know, it's like $25 to get in or something for a car. Of course, by its nature, it's kind of a long way from any of the major towns or cities in it, and you have to drive for at least an hour to get to any of these, uh, to get to this. But once you're there, there's, you know, it, you could spend days there. But it's even better if you can visit at night. Yeah, nighttime is where the lava becomes much more obvious. Even if it's deep down inside its pit, 
you would still see the glow and you would see illuminating clouds in the sky. And you might even see that for a long way around. Apparently, you can even see the glow of Mauna Loa from Mauna Kea. So yeah, it's just another one of those things that makes Hawaii an awesome place for a science nerd like me. Also, Sky felt quite inspired, apparently. Cause I 